The COVID-19 pandemic has caused more harm than good to countries. Federal and state government should please ensure the right to maximum food, shelter and security and all the necessity to the people. Welcome to Expression House. Kinsley Wally, founder Unity House Foundation and member of All Progressive Congress, is my guest on today's show. It's good to have you on the show, sir. Thanks for having me. Mr. Kinsley Wally, ever since the pandemic started, how has the NCDC uh, made efforts so far? The point, I think, so far is that they have handled themselves incredibly well in terms of within the context of resources available to them. I think that the NCDC has um, tried to keep keep themselves away from the harassment of worried public. They've tried to be as professional as they can possibly be within uh, the limits of resources available to them. Given the size and scope of the um, economic impact of the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, is there a need to implement other recovering strategy to stimulate demand or should efforts be made towards enhancing the efficiency and effectiveness of the distributive mechanism to reach households that are worst hit by the pandemic? The pandemic actually made it so clear that things are very bad, that things are desperately bad and that we need to do something quickly before something explodes in our faces. For example, you see people who are willing to do anything to get food and not caring if that process would even lead to their being um, infected. You see people will tell you that, yes, coronavirus kills, but hunger is killing us. For them, coronavirus is speculative, while hunger is something they are having to deal with every day. So I think that what the pandemic has done is to, you know, wake us all up to be able to address the, the issue of hunger in our land, the issue of food in our land. Yes, there's been legitimate arguments that we need to social distance, we need to, we need to stay back home, and all of those. Now, the other side of it is this. Yes, in the advanced economies, in the advanced countries, the welfare package, the kind of system they operate, it's okay for you to social distance. It's okay for you to stay back at home and get deliveries. And you can even go get stuff and stop. Like people will say, oh, you don't have money. What of those who even have money to stop buy things to stock the house? There's no light. So what do you store it with? You store things, unless you're talking about dry food. Are you going to survive on dry food alone? No protein, nothing. And it has brought to fore the need for us to address certain issues that affect us as a country. The issue of food security, we need to address that because the consequences of not addressing food security, um, my dear, I think, COVID-19 might be a child's play because a man who is hungry, when he's angry, I'm not sure you'll be able to social distance yourself from it. Don't you think there is also need to um, look into the medical aspect too? It's, 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 it's a whole package. Okay. It's a whole package because equally this emergency has exposed the fact that we don't have, we don't have health facilities. You know, we have to go into ad hoc type stuff. You go into a hotel, they build tents and all of that. Maybe, meanwhile, you have the University of Potako Teaching Hospital that has large expanse of land for anything you want to do with. Even the State University Teaching Hospital, the uh, BMH, it's a smaller place, no doubt. But it's not all about size. It can be more efficiently run. Do you understand? Even for the, the even the disease control center at Irwa, how big is the place? So you ask yourself, why is a state like River State unable to provide a disease control center? Don't forget that this is not the first time we're having an issue like this. We had um, uh, Ebola. We had Ebola. 
what that meant is that it gave us an opportunity to establish a facility that will manage this kind of emergency. We we'll moved from Ebola to Lassa fever. We've been playing a lot of politics with the issue of Lassa fever. If Ebola came suddenly, what about Lassa fever? So you mean that after Ebola and after Lassa fever, we still have not taught it proper to fix um, a center where issues like this. Let's accept the fact that this is a big crisis. But in a small way, we should have started with something. But the most important thing is that we don't have health structures that support any kind of things like this. Presently in River State, do we have any effective um, isolation centers? COVID that's responsible for the uh, Lekohia Isolation Center. That one is there. So um, it's all it's there for all to see. I've not been a victim and I don't pray to be a victim. <laughs> I have not been arrested and taken to the isolation center for okay. disobeying the lockdown. So I'm not in a position to know what it's inside the isolation center. The closest I'm aware of is at the UPTH. They've been able to launch, commission something small, but I think effective. Of course, the um, COVID-19 has likely affected the economy. So don't you think that the government should um, clearly communicate its um, economic relief plans to the public and clarify eligibility timelines and procedures? I still see how people rush to the market without regards to any kind of care. And then um, it simply means that they had nothing. Because if we had food given to them during the lockdown, I'm not sure people would turn out in their numbers to go to somewhere they are likely to be harmed. Some people are actually thinking about life after pandemic. Anyway, you want to look at it. COVID is going to be here with us for a while. So what we're talking about, how do we manage our lives? Manage it uh, with the presence of Mr. COVID by the side so that we don't let it overwhelm us to the extent that we're not thinking about our tomorrow. Federal and state governments have acknowledged the devastating impacts that COVID-19 will have on food and livelihood sources of um, the most vulnerable Nigerians. Should there be a um, need to deploy more resources, creativity and transparency to ensure the basic necessity um, of life for everyone? Food security is about the deliberate policy of government to get people get back to the farms and provide incentives for those who have decided to feed us. It's a relationship between food security and our security. Now we live in a state or we live in, in a moment where plantain has become seasonal. It shouldn't be. Every food item that we feed on comes from the outside. Why? Because nobody goes to farm, not because they don't want to farm. You spend all your energy and resources, even borrow for uh, uh, um, seedlings, and then you go to the farm, you're managing your farm, call it plantain, call it yam, call it cassava, just before it's time for you to go and harvest. You get to your farm one day, some Bukenians have gone there and collected everything. You need to address the issue of security so that women will feel comfortable to go to the farm. So that people will be encouraged. I do not know whether it's exclusive to our state alone, but it's a major issue we will need to address. It's a whole gamut of issues that we need that I think that the, the, the pandemic had exposed. So let's say we've made some mistakes. So let's draw a line and say, okay, moving forward, what do we do so that if this kind of situation does arise again, we won't be caught pants down. The appointment of the new chief of staff um, by the president, um, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, did it come to Nigeria as a surprise or a shock? Mm. Was, they were actually thinking that the president should have taken a little breath before appointing the new chief of staff. So it comes funny, to funny, very funny. People expected him to take a breath and yeah. before, the same people that accuse me of taking forever to appoint somebody. <laughs> <laughs> if I go by history, I think the president got it very, very right. 
He's got somebody who is very educated and independent minded. So I think this is one time that uh, they are going to test really his capacity for offering public service. Globally now, facing on the lockdown issue, however, it has actually prevented many Nigerians from working, traveling, and also doing their normal business. Most stay one place, Uto Waka. <laughs> <laughs> and also the price of food has also increased as well due to, uh, due to the issue of the pandemic. What do you th think the federal and the state government should do to help the people at this time? You cannot leave a champion life on the salary of Guinness, a conservative figure of more than 60% of the middle class in the north have farms. There are no roses without thorns. We need to address the issue of food by doing the right things, taking the right steps, and deliberate government policies that will encourage people to go back to the farm. No country that survives on importation. We were one of the biggest producers of palm oil at some point in this world. Today, I mean, everybody knows that Malaysia, that's one of the biggest palm oil producing country in the world, I guess, got their first seedlings of palm oil from Nigeria. Our Hope for national survivor rests on how much we realize that we need to get back to the farms. Every part of this nation is blessed with one thing or the other. We are once one of the world's biggest cocoa producers. We, we import, I'm sure we even import cocoa for all of those factories that do chocolates and all of that around Lagos and Lalaroba. I think government should spend more energy on trying to make the people know how to feed themselves or get them to feed themselves by providing security for people who want to go to farm, farm, by providing incentives by way of financial or even seedlings and all of that. And then closing our borders to all kinds of things that come in by way of importation. Yeah. All right, thank you, Kinsley Wally. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And Thanks this is all me. we have for you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye.